In this video, I'm conducting an interview with Jordan Nelson. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high quality content that you enjoy. And with a membership feature, you can get exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgammon and Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. Uh, again, in this video, it's my great pleasure to be conducting an interview with Jordan Nelson. Welcome. Thanks so much, Alex. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. How are you doing today? I am very well. We were speaking a little before stream. I just had a new baby boy last week, and so... Nothing but good times here in the house the past week. Congratulations. Fantastic. So I guess we, we can start with that. And you're married and you have two children, right? Correct. A four-year-old girl and new one-week-old boy now. Great. Is he healthy? Healthy, happy, sleeps a lot. He's a good baby. Good, good. I have two kids my my son is nine and my daughter is three my nine-year-old knows how to play backgammon and my three-year-old uh she likes to like roll the dice and play with the checkers and things like that yeah you know my we're big at least me i'm a big board game person in general especially backgammon but pretty much anything and so we've got a lot that we play with our daughter and she's expressed interest in backgammon like when i play with my wife she'll roll for my wife and move checkers and it's fun to get them interested in it. Oh, yeah. My my daughter really likes um, rolling the dice through a baffle box. Do you have a baffle box? I do not have a baffle box. But it's really nice. The kids love like how it looks and how it sounds and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. So good. And where are you joining us from today? So I am in uh, Provo, Utah. I'm from southern Utah originally. It's nice and hot here. Okay. How far is that from Salt Lake City, for example? Uh, 40 minutes. Oh, okay. 30, so 40. Not far. Not it's too bad. warm in the summer, but I guess it could get cold in the winter. Plenty of snow in the winter. Yeah, it's at altitude, right? It is. Yeah, we got gorgeous picturesque mountains just 10 minutes away, so the view out our window is gorgeous. You have good skiing there? Yes. I'm not much of a skier myself. I grew up in the desert, but uh, that's pretty much what everyone does in the winter. Yeah. Okay, great. And uh, what kind of work do you do as a primary occupation? Uh, I am a resident physician. So I'm in my second year of training. And after, I guess in the spring of 2026, I'll finish up, finally get to start my career after, what, 12 years of education at this point. I remember that. I did something like 15 years of training after high school. And back then, they had just started a policy where you you're not allowed to work more than 80 hours a week. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What, what do they have for you now? Like It's the, it's still the same. 80 same. is the cap. And luckily in family medicine, we're not worked to the bone as much as the, the surgeons are. But we still on our hospital weeks, we get 70, 80 hours. So it's time. Right. For sure. But you also have some outpatient rotations and things like that. Yes, thankfully. Those are those are like regular hours, right? Yes, 40, 40 to fifty. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how do you how do you have so much time to do all this stuff with a, a busy work and a family? You know, I I think med school forced me to learn to prioritize time and be really good at micromanaging my schedule. And I just I'm just a driven person. I've always had a lot of hobbies and interests, and so. A lot of planning, a lot of waking up before everyone else and going to bed later than everyone else is where I fit a lot of this in. All these backgammon videos I've been uploading have been recorded at 11 p.m. while I'm waiting to feed my new baby. <laughs> That's fantastic. So I know yeah. uh, you recently started a YouTube channel about backgammon, the serial hobbyist. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I know you have some previous experience with uh, YouTube and videos and things like that. Yeah, so this I started making videos in 2019. I was a DJ for 10 years, so I was very familiar with tech stuff, audio, visual, and I just had all these speakers and lights, and I was like, I should start reviewing things. I'm always looking for the passive income or the side hustle or whatever, and so yeah. started making videos. It was a very slow 
increase in subscribers and views at first. I'm sure, you know, you having been on the YouTube grind yourself, you know. And then I went to medical school. It, things took a dip. And then yeah. in the pandemic, I had plenty of time at home. So I just started filming anything in our house that was at all tech related and making videos for it. And once you pass like a thousand subscribers on YouTube, at least for me, I started getting like companies that were like, do you want to review products and, and check out this thing from, from our manufacturer. And so I started doing even more and more and it just, it grew from there. That's great. Fantastic. And, uh, so you recently started the backgammon one. So let's talk a little bit about that. How'd you, how'd you get into backgammon initially? So that's another, that's another pandemic thing. I, 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 that's probably a story you've heard from other guests or other people in the backgammon community. I, I called my channel the serial hobbyist because that's who I am as a person. I find another rabbit hole on YouTube to fall into every six, nine months or so. And I, I learn a new skill, whether it's collecting records or building mechanical keyboards or something. I, I always fall into something. And uh, one of my hobbies in the pandemic was poker. I picked that up and I have a good group that I love to play with. Super fun. I love the social aspect of it, but my wife, not so big on it. She doesn't play. And so I was like, what could I, what could I do with my wife? What's something that I could get involved with with her? And she's not a big gamer herself, but I stumbled onto, I think the Blunderblots channel or something oh, in Jason the pandemic. Dordal. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I found something. I was like, this is interesting. I, and I think the alert, the boards like sucked me in. I'm a sucker for like the paraphernalia of hobbies, like the, the tactile things. And so I bought a board, we started playing and surprisingly with most games, she's like, eh, but with backgammon, she's like, I like this. And so we would play a few games every night and that I got hooked. And so throughout the pandemic and just onward till now, I play with her at least every other night we play a few games. And over the past year, I've been introducing it to all our friends. We host little events at our house and I play whenever I can. That's fantastic. Maybe you can start a club there. I know that the pandemic had a lot of actually positive influences on Backgammon because these sites like uh, Backgammon Galaxy and Backgammon Studios Heroes, uh, people started playing online because you couldn't play in person. And that really popularized things. And now they're YouTube channels, they're Facebook groups, Instagram, social media, it's everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And I, we need to get more of a presence in Utah. The, as far as I know, having checked like the Backgammon Federation website uh, or the Backgammon Association. I know there's a club in Salt Lake. It's pretty far for me to oh. make it with my work schedule. So we need something closer to where I'm at. Well, maybe maybe you can start one. I, I mean, I'm on the board of directors of the USBGF. Um, I can try to help you with that. I don't know. Yeah, we should we should do it. Well, I'm I'm trying to do my part to spread the game as much as I can, at least within my own circle. But making it more of a public thing would probably be pretty helpful. That's great. So you you primarily play like socially for fun with your wife and with your friends and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I haven't I've just barely picked up my first book, the the original like Paul Paul Magriel as I say his oh, name. Oh yeah, Paul Magriel. The, the Bible, yeah, the the OG one. So I've been I'm about halfway through that and it's working apparently cuz my wife Mark the other day, she's like, I used to beat you every once in a while and I haven't won in like weeks. So it's helpful for sure. And I'm I'm just getting into studying the game. And when I play XG on my phone, actually paying attention. But when when I host, it's it's mostly to introduce people, teach the game, right. um, have them enjoy a little friendly competition with friends, but no tournaments or anything for me yet. Yeah, that's that's fun. That's great. You know, that reminds me when, you know, I started playing backgammon, I don't know, maybe like four years ago when I was little, but not like seriously studying it until I was actually in medical school myself. Yeah. Um, and I was in a combined program with graduate school. So uh -huh. after the first two years of medical school, I was in graduate school and I had more free time and I would play in the local backgammon group. It was in Nashville and they still yeah. have that now. And I see them on Facebook and things like that. And that's when I remember I first read that the first book, uh, which was Paul McGreal backgammon. And I read a lot of like Bill Roberti and, and many, many, many since then. Um, but that's, that's when I started doing it when I was in medical school and graduate yeah. school. Yeah. Uh, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from that and improved significantly. 
Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm starting to recognize correct plays and, and where I've made blunders and errors before. So little by little, I, I, it's one of those easy to learn lifetime to master things. And so I'm definitely at the start of that curve. Yeah. That's what I tell people. It's uh, easy to learn, but hard to master. The winner's the one who bears off faster. Yeah. That's right. And I know, so now you're, you're collecting some boards and making some videos on that. That's fantastic. I found you recently on the social media and you've been making some outstanding videos. We'll take a look at that. I noticed that you have one of them in your background, right? Yeah. So, to, uh, Which one was your first board that you got? Oh gosh. Well, the very first was probably like an Amazon special. You know what I mean? Okay. Nothing right. crazy. And I immediately hated that the points or the the checkers did not fit evenly across the six right points. yeah yeah and i hated that they were stitched and they would get caught up you couldn't slide them yeah so like i immediately was like i can tell the difference and so i think i returned that and ended up getting a silverman and co is my first okay board. those are good yeah and there's great i loved it and i've owned three or four different back or gammon village boards i have two currently and but now i've got 11 12 yeah, so let's let's talk about that. The the one behind you, tell us about that one, please. Yeah, so this was probably the th second or third board I bought. This is an FM Gammon Mini Blackhawk, and I wanted to try FM Gammon, but their boards usually pretty dang pricey. I was still in med school, I was living on loans, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this was a splurge for me, and this was like their most accessible board. Uh, and so it's it's tra I don't know if it's travel size. It's it's still seventeen, almost eighteen inches. So it's it's like the middle ground between tournament and like really compact, but um, the checkers on it, like I mentioned in my video, are just, they're beautiful. And I think FM Gammon's known for their checkers and they're so weighty that it makes the board feel a lot bigger than it actually is. And I, it's still got that FM Gammon quality just in a compact form factor. Yeah, I, I really like the FM Gammon boards. Um... I own one myself. That's the one in in my background. the the position The position that you see there. I don't know if you could see it, uh -huh. but that's the position on the cover of my book. Um, I took a photograph of my board, and I think I really like the FM Gammon boards. They they use like nice wood. I think this one's an MDF. What is it? Micro dense, uh, medium density fiber board. I think medium yeah, yeah. density fiber. So it's it's a little bit lighter. Um, the I, I guess the thing I like the most about my board is it, it has the MagFit technology where you could just change the surfaces really Sweet. easily. I think on the new, on these smaller ones, they don't have that technology, but that's, that's my favorite thing. I could like change it. Um, the biggest downside is the, the weight of the dense mahogany wood. So it's a mm -hmm. little hard to carry, but it's, it's fantastic. And, and this travel size is just like, great. It is. And it, what makes it nice, I think, is the fact that the checkers are big enough, they're weighty, they feel good, but they shrunk the board down by not having bear off trays. Right. So it's pretty slim this direction, but like, you know, almost 18 inches in length. So I, I don't know. It's a great idea that they had. And it all just fits in the little, the checkers and the cups, everything's in like a little cloth bag on the inside. So Good. And it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a handle. So it's a little bit smaller. It does not. They give you a, like a fabric case to carry it in. Right. I've uh, seen those. Yeah. It's good. So that's fantastic. Like, like the way I kind of categorize the size of the boards is by the checker size. Those are one and a half, I believe. Right. One they're and actually, I think they're like one and three eighths. So they're like oh, a little, hmm. yeah. So they're pretty small, but they're like a half inch thick. So pretty they're chunky. thicker. Yeah. Like 12 millimeters or something or 12 yeah. and a half millimeters. Uh, the ones that are the traditional tournament style are either like one and three quarters inch uh, or two inches, like 44.5 or 45 millimeters or 50 yep. millimeters. Uh -huh. And then like I kind of categorize it by uh, the smaller ones are, are more common, but I categorize it by how many checkers you can fit across. It looks like on that board you can fit 10 and maybe an 11th, 11. I think, in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like some of them you could fit like 12 or 13 and obviously those are bigger and it could be a little nicer. Uh, but at the same time, some people have trouble reaching to the other side. So they prefer smaller ones. Yeah. And I have three tournament boards and that's probably just going to keep growing. So this was just, <laughs> I think I bought this one as a function of my 
financial limitations, you know, going forward, I imagine I'll mostly be buying tournament size. Yeah. Yeah. And what is, what does your boss think of you buying these boards? <laughs> oh, they don't care what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have so many hobbies that I sink money into the backgammon's the least of the concerns. <laughs> she doesn't get upset. No. That's how it is with my she wife. Yeah, no, she's very support. I mean, she knows that this is like, this is my outlet. This is how I enjoy myself. We each have our thing and she's so supportive. Yeah, yeah. Good. So uh, you told us about this one. I've seen three reviews uh, thus far. What are, what are the other boards that uh, you wanted to talk about? Maybe I should pull up the the YouTube channel so we can. Yeah, see. we can talk about maybe the reviews I've done first and what's coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Let's see. All right. So yeah. are you able to see this now? I can see it. So I'll put a link in the description to uh, this channel called The Serial Hobbyist. Um, I just show these three different uh, videos. Those are the videos you have currently. I, I won't click on them because people can go <laughs> click on them uh, yeah. later. But there's the Points Work, uh, FM Gammon, and the Monopolis. So yeah. you want to go ahead and tell us about it. Yeah, let's talk about some of these. So the first video I did was the Monopolis, and I think I chose this one just because I there's not really any Monopolis reviews online, and they produce a lot of boards. Uh, you can get them. Gammon Village has some of their wood ones, and then there's uh, Farrar Tanner, which is, I think, like a UK-based, and there's also Masters Traditional Games. A lot of these are, like, across the pond. Uh, but their boards are great. They're made in Greece and Thebes, um, and they've been making them since the 1970. And so they make mostly wood boards, which in my video I mentioned, like a lot of people that play seriously don't like because there's, you know, they're pretty loud and they clack a lot. And so this is one of their premium options. It's the leatherette surface, and it's beautiful. Like the inlaid leatherette is awesome. It's not printed on. They like cut out all the the points and inlay them into the background, which is really cool. Um, it comes with pretty basic wood checkers by default. And I asked Monopolis if they would swap me out for their mother of pearl, which are really pretty. And right. they totally did it. They didn't give me, you know, the great customer service. They didn't charge me any extra to do that, even though those checkers are worth more on their site. So that was really cool of them. The only downside of that is that they, I think this board is supposed to have like 40 millimeters and these are 37.5. I feel like companies just label all of those as 1.5 inches for the U S oh, even checkers. though those, those millimeters millimeters make a difference. Yeah. The checkers. And so, so they, they don't quite fit six across, you know, they're like a little bit loose, but other than that, the, the craftsmanship is exceptional and I only paid 200 for that board. And so it, it's, it's really great. well done. Yeah. Very good. And then the one that I saw most recently is this one, I guess it's called Pointsburg, and it yeah. looks a lot like the uh, Backgammon Galaxy Earth board, right? Yes. Have you seen some of the online? It's generated some buzz, Alex. I've seen it. I've played yeah. on the Earth board. I mean, the, the board that I have, my FM Gammon Talat board, is yeah. very similar because FM Gammon manufactures the uh, – back in galaxy boards so they're yeah. very similar so i'm familiar with it and i've seen uh one or two of these types of boards that are either exactly this one or something very similar yeah and i'll be i mean everyone can tell that this is a, a an imitation an homage whatever you want to call it uh and it's definitely not up to the the craftsmanship of FM Gammon. Like there's no doubt about it. It's not fooling anyone. Like just if someone wears like a knockoff Rolex or something, you know, they're trying to own the real thing and they're not. But I think for boards you can buy on Amazon, this is probably the best deal you're going to get. It's real wood. It's extremely heavy. It's very, you know, bulky and heavy. The surface is a nice microfiber. The checkers are, they're glossy, but they're weighted and they they feel nice. You've got like the removable magnetic bear off tray and storage, uh, you know, area, which is really cool. And there's just, the only issue with it is just the, the quality control. Like the first, I've returned two of them. The first board I got that had glue issues with the edges and the second board, the bar was very uneven, but the third time's the charm. And I ended up keeping the third one. So if people are like willing to either mod modify it or do a return or two, if you can get one that had good quality control, it's actually a really great board. Yeah. It's, it's good for people that, that are on a budget. There are a lot of people like that. I met people in a recent event. Uh, one of the ladies, she's younger like you. And, uh, 
she's on a budget, but she wants to get like a nice board. And, you know, these, these are fantastic. I mean, the, the original ones or the regular ones or the larger ones mm -hmm. are really nice to play on. I, oh, I know yeah. you've seen those, but, mm -hmm. but if you're on a budget, you know, I go to these social events and they have tiny boards, tiny boards. that can yeah. hardly hold the checkers, but, but they work. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, you could play on anything, but it, this gives you a little taste of the premium experience, but you're not spending right. seven, 800, right? Which is really great. Right. Okay. So let me go ahead and stop sharing that. Um, I'll put a link so people can uh, uh, go to your channel and watch the videos. And by the time this is published, you'll have many more, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, yes. So what are, what are some of the other boards that uh, you either own or you're planning to review? Yeah, so I'll work from maybe oldest to newest boards that I have. So I still have a Silverman & Co., one of their 19-inch models with the one-and-a-half-inch checkers and, like, a blue finish. Pretty accessible board. Again, like, great beginner if someone's wanting to not have an Amazon board, but they're still unsure if they're getting into into backgammon or not. I think that's a good one. I have the Wycliffe Brothers, the 24-inch with the nickel-plated checkers, which – are fantastic oh, those are nice beautiful like those are so heavy and just they're weighted so right yeah they're, they're like big rocks i mean they're so nice and the way the metal clacks together is is really great um so that's probably my biggest board that 24 inch one and then i just recently like a month ago got the chris lloyd tournament i mm -hmm. did the brooklyn silver which has the white and the red points with the white and the red checkers and the chris lloyd is just beautiful the leather cups like you got that smell of the the new leather so so great um and then i just barely yesterday got my art gammon board in the mail and oh so, wow have yeah. you opened it was that have you opened it up yet oh yes yeah okay, it's, it's <laughs> okay. In the other no i the second i got it me and the wife played a game and i she was mad that i won it's like i have to win the first game on the <laughs> <board>. like <laughs> otherwise it's a bad omen so what are the um, what are the colors and features of the art gammon? So yeah, so I worked directly with uh, Ufuk, the guy that like owns. Oh, the company. Okay. Yeah, great guy. I, we were messaging on WhatsApp for a couple weeks, like talking about different surfaces, and he okay. like gave input on colors that he thought would print well together. So it's a it's a tan like an embossed leather tan exterior, like mm -hmm. a light brown with gold accents, and then the inside is a silver play surface with dark green and very dark blue points and then okay. it has uh yellow checkers and green checkers it's it's really wow, pretty wow. yeah those ones are, are really beautiful i i tell people i think the wycliffe brothers ones are very good like uh it's it's a great price point for the quality that you get uh, yeah. chris lloyd i know that's in providence rhode island and uh jason briggs is uh a board member he's he's the one that runs the company or owns the company and he he's a board member of the usbgf they have outstanding customer service i've mm -hmm. i've been in touch with them and they've been creating boards for like decades not just backgammon but like chess and mahjong yeah and things like that and there's there's a unique because they have the cork surfaces and i have a friend um i interviewed once uh eric schmidt he he actually resurfaces those um so that one's good. And then the art gammons, I, I really like the art gammons because um, similar to some of the other ones, you can customize them. You can kind of fully customize the exterior, the interior, the colors, the, the surfaces, the checkers, all sorts of things. Yeah. And that's what was really neat about it. So it's, it's the same, I paid the same price shipped from Turkey that I did for my Wycliffe brothers board. And yeah. I got to pick the surface, the colors, the the checker colors, like all of that. So it's a pretty incredible deal when it comes to, I guess, the custom boards or the handmade boards. It's probably the most accessible, affordable one you could get, I think. Yeah. Is that like your new favorite board now because you just got it? It's how it always is. The new toy is the exciting thing. Yeah. So you said you have 10, 11 boards? Yeah. So what I have you mentioned all of them? Uh, let's see. We, we got through like six or seven. I have some of the other ones are smaller. I actually have a an Aries, um, like a 70s Aries board. That's really? Travel, travel size, like a small one. Those are um, vintage. It is. It's got the, uh, it's got, it's not corduroy, but like a, like a 
not on canvas either, but like a, uh, a silver exterior, gray exterior with like caramel accents. And then the inside is just kind of standard two tone brown. Like it's a very retro 70s vibe board. Right. And I, I snagged that on eBay for a killer deal and just to have in the car for quick pickup games, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, have you seen on the backgammon groups the Alan Masters boards, the roll-up ones? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't own one of his, but I was like hounding for a DIY project, and I was like, I'm going to try and make one myself. Really? And so I did my best attempt at like making a roll-up board. It's nowhere near his quality, but I, it has yeah. like one, uh, one and three-quarter inch checkers. Um, I printed out like a leather surface and got the magnets in the wood, and so I made like a – uh, a rip off Alan Masters one that I that I just use for myself. I'm not trying to make them as a business, but I right. it's fun to have to take with us when we go out and about. Yeah, yeah, good. good. Yeah, and then let's see what else do I have? Uh, I think we're are we at ten? I don't know. I, I don't know. I have, I, I've also just picked up random Facebook Marketplace finds like uh, unknown manufacturer like boards that I thought looked cool, the color scheme or whatever. Um, nothing crazy. Like most of them are pretty small, but yeah. 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 That's, that's fantastic. I was telling you, I have a number of, uh, XG virtual boards, the skins, and yeah. it's like what I play, I play on, on the computer all the time. Uh, and it's really fun playing on like different surfaces, different colors and things like that. And I'm sure like as a collector, like yourself, it's fun to play on different, different boards and different surfaces. Yeah, I feel like there's two types of people. There's people that buy once, cry once, right? Like they spay, they save $1,500 and they buy like the, the super nice board, right? And they only need one board. They play that board every time. But I'm like a variety as the spice of life person. So to me, it's more fun to have maybe 10 affordable boards that I can swap between every time because I like the different experience of the materials and the the colors and the woods. And that's honestly how I built my collection. I don't have any repeats of brands or of, of uh, materials because it's nice to play on a cork one day and then to play on the microfiber and then to play on the wood the other day. So yeah, that's kind of my actually, Yeah. That, that was actually something I was going to ask you about. There are going to be a lot of people that watch this video, perhaps are looking to get a board and they don't know, but there are different aspects of the boards, like the surfaces, the checkers and things like that, and different types of quality. And how does that affect the playing experience? Can you tell us about like some of those details between the different types of boards, please? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Let's see. The the things that change the most would probably be the board construction itself, whether it's raw wood, you, as, in, as in the case of the FM gammon, you know, like that, just the pure wood surface or my FM gammon, which is like a coated wood. Mm -hmm. And then you have boards like the Silverman and Co. or the Wycliffe, which are uh, like a manufactured wood covered in a, a faux leather or a fabric. So I think that makes a difference because one, when you transport the board, like how much do you need to protect it? Is it hard wearing surface or is it something that can stand, uh, is it something you need to baby a little more? And then the surface plays an impact in how the checkers sound. So like when you bump the checkers up against the wood on the FM gamma, it just is such a sweet sound. Or maybe I, you have the P40 as well. And that's a metal yeah rim isn't it? that's it's a so metallic sound metallic, so you yeah. have to get used to it. a lot of people don't like it don't like the sound you get used to it. but i mean it looks beautiful yeah and i i think i would like the sound so that's so that's one aspect is like the the audio experience and then the touch of the surface so most boards i feel like are the the I don't the synthetic material, the microfiber or the suede or whatever it is, the felt. And I think the biggest consideration is you want something where the checkers slide easily because that's part of the experience. And people buy the affordable boards on Amazon with the stitched points that are raised off the surface and it just it messes up the flow of the game. And so if I had one piece of advice for a new player, it's get a board where the points are printed on or they're inlaid down where the checkers just slide smoothly. That's big. Right. And then the size of the checkers, that makes a big difference. I think if someone's serious about backgammon, they shouldn't get a board with less than, I don't know, one and a half is their first board. I mean, I have variety like this one, you know, one and three eighths. But if you're going to have one board, have it be at least substantial enough that it's fun to play on. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's big. And then 
I, colors. That's the other fun part, choosing fun colors. Right, right. I, I have, well, two two main ones, the, the FM Gamma and Talat board, which my, my favorite thing is, the, you know, you can change the surfaces so easily. And I have probably over 10 different surfaces. And That's I awesome. must have uh, over 20 different sets of checkers. So you can kind of like mix and match them. Uh, Are so, they all the FM Gammon checkers or do you get them from other places? I have a, a lot of FM Gammon checkers and I have a, a number of sets of the Zaza Sachi Italian checkers. Those are really beautiful. They're probably maybe like half a millimeter smaller, but, but they fit, they fit well. It's, mm -hmm. it's really nice. Uh, um, so that's that's like my favorite my favorite thing about it. They have like a lot of good qualities. Um, for example, um, there's a slot where you can put the dice cups. Uh, the checker trays fit in a single longitudinal row of fifteen checkers, uh, which is my preference rather than like three rows of five that are horizontal. Just because uh -huh. when you bear off, you usually bear off two at a time, and after you bear off four and you bear off two more, it's like. <laughs> off it's like yeah it seems weird i never considered that because i actually like the sets of five but that makes sense to to the flow of the game when when you play a lot and you're doing a lot of bear offs i mean that that makes it but i like like i like the cube how there's like a slot for the cube those mm -hmm. cubes are actually very nice because you can open them up and fit eight dice inside the cube and what i actually do is i store eight dice in the cube to make it a little heavier so Hmm. that that feels a little bit better yeah uh, so like i like those aspects i like the fact that it has a handle um it has like these biscuits on the corners and that that helps you know keep the corners together yeah uh, and i guess my my the other board that i have is a p40 which is really nice i like those beautiful metal rimmed checkers i yeah. like that it's lightweight the one i have is a two inch checker one so yeah. so it's a little bit larger but but it's a lighter weight so it's kind of like easier to transport and then i'm thinking of getting another one like my next one might be something lighter and smaller mm -hmm. uh like the one and three quarter or yeah one one and three quarters in checkers, uh, but like either like a gammon or an FTH um, that fit like 10 across, 10 checkers across. So yeah. it's more compact, lighter weight and easier to travel with. Um, the FTH are beautiful. Yeah, those, those are beautiful. I, I think like what I'm thinking of is like, and I have a surface like this. Um, have you seen the Gaminer Paul McGreal style one mm -hmm. where it's like a, a gray, like kind of like a patterned gray with like black and white points? Yes. I, I feel like I like that uh, the best because the colors are neutral. It's maximal contrast between the field and the, and the checker and the points. And then you can put any color checkers and it'll match. It, it'll, yeah. it'll be fine. And I, I feel like uh, that's like a forever board because, you know, you can use that, change the checkers and it'll always be good. Yeah, absolutely. I, and that's kind of, I mean, this board right here has the same color scheme, right? Like you could put any colors with right. this and it would work. Yeah. Some, and from, from my eyes, uh, I really like the contrast between like the points and the field and things like that. Sometimes for me, when, the two points or the points in the field are similar are like different shades of the same color. Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to see. I agree. I'm very colorblind. So that, that happens to me. Um, I, the thing I like about the FTH the most is the surf. Like, I think it's wool that they use. I think Marino inlay, wool. Yeah. They inlay wool, which it just, the texture looks just amazing. Those ones, uh, the Gamner also does that. I know Bob Zavrol does that as well he has he's a good friend of mine and a very good player um he has this unique structure where he has like i guess it's called double racks for the checker trays so there's a checker tray that fits the 15 checkers but mm. there's also a little slot beyond that where you can put doubling cubes oh that's cool and and there's an area where you can put the um the cups in so makes it a little wider, but, but they're yeah. nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So great. So how long have you been uh, doing this, this whole backgammon hobby and collecting boards? 
So let's see, 20, I think it was 2021. And I like most of my things, it's like a slow burn at first and then takes off. So I, I got like one board and then a year later, another board. And then over the past six months, I've bought like six. So it's like exponentially going up. And I do the YouTube thing and I do like um, some Amazon influencer, like product review stuff too. So I have this little commission that comes in every month and that's usually my treat to myself is to buy another board lately so oh, i'm really? expecting like a board a month going forward so that's like oh the, the commission is from your other youtube channel right yes correct yeah so you know this this backgammon one that i've made is purely for the uh the love of the game i'm not expecting to make any money from this i just want to talk about boards so that's interesting because like, like I do, I do YouTube, like I, I get a little bit of commission on, on this stuff, but, but it's not like enough to buy a board and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's that like for our viewers that are watching to, you know, make YouTube videos and kind of like uh, monetize it? It's been great, like a huge blessing in our life because I, you know, resident salary, not that great, got mm. a lot of student debt and I was on loans for a lot of time. So it's nice to like, this is my, my play money. It comes in and it was the same thing as like the viewership and everything. It was real slow and I, I get money from the YouTube ads on that channel, which is great. But the bigger income is I do the Amazon affiliate stuff. So people can click my links and stuff that they buy on Amazon. I get a little portion of, and uh, it's just awesome to have. It's not true passive income, but to have a little bit coming in to play with for my hobbies. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so what are you thinking of planning on doing with this YouTube channel moving forward? I know you're reviewing some boards. Yeah. You know, I'm not a backgammon strategist at this point. I'm still a, a young cricket myself. And so I don't anticipate offering any backgammon advice, but I think for the immediate future, I've probably got at least another six board videos to make in the, in the coming weeks. And then new boards will be coming in at least monthly to, to share reviews on, hopefully to help people choose a board, you know? Like I am someone, when I buy a product, I, I consume as much info about it as I can. Like when I bought my Chrysloid, I watched every Chrysloid video on YouTube. Right. And when I, when I bought my, the Blackhawk, you know, there wasn't really anything. So that's why I've, I've made this video and uh, hopefully other people that are as big of nerds about this stuff as me can, can watch it and enjoy. But I also think if I were to go down a different avenue with this channel for Batgammon, it would be maybe talking about how to host your own Batgammon events like I've done at my house. So my wife and I love to host in general. We host casino nights. We host board yeah. game nights. We host movie nights on a big screen in the backyard. No, things like that. And so I, recently it's become backgammon nights. You know, we set up a bunch of folding tables in the living room and I put out all my boards and I made a little PowerPoints the first time so people could come and I taught them how to play the game for 10 minutes and then everyone sat down and me and my wife kind of spread out so we could teach people. And it was a blast. Like I got texts afterward, all of our friends like, we bought a board and we've been playing nonstop. And it's really cool to see, just like Remy said, like to ignite the fire and like young people and see yeah. young people ready to play the game. And yeah, so that's another avenue I think I could explore in the channel. Yeah, I know when I started mine, I'd, I'd been watching other YouTube channels that have inspired me to do this. Did you have any that inspired you to create this channel? Um, Blunderblots. I mentioned him at first. Yes, yeah. he's great. His content is so good. It's enjoyable. It's real. Like it's conversational. It's so fun to watch him and his wife play and go to tournaments for the first time. And like it, it makes me excited. Like I show it to my wife. I'm like, look, they do it, babe. Like we could do it too. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think he told me they had a baby maybe six or eight months ago, too. I, I think I saw that in one of his videos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fantastic. And I've seen um, specifically other ones who do reviews on boards that, that are fantastic as well. Yeah, there's a there's a newer channel as well, maybe a few weeks or months old. Uh, I don't know where the guy is located, but he got an Art Gammon board and he had a uh, uh, and one of these FM gammon, he got a black Hawk, but the full size, not the small one. Like I have, I can't remember his Jim, Jim. Jim something I, like I think I, yeah, I think I've seen. Some yeah. So he has yeah. been good to watch. And then, um, there's another guy that never shows his face. It's just like face down of his boards. Vin. He has, what? Vin R. 
Vin, yes, and he has Vinny. great like he has Gamau and FT like he yeah. has some great boards, and so I've loved to watch theirs. Yeah, theirs are great. I used to see a lot of them from uh, also Justin McKenna. I don't know. Yes, if Justin, he hasn't posted in a while. I think he just owns all his boards and he's done all. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he was getting some some great ones as well. Yeah, I think. You know, one of these days when when I have some time, I'll do one on on my FM Gammon board because uh, there are uh, a few. I've got, I've gotten like a lot of recording equipment now, doing these types of videos and live streams, for example, on boards and playing matches and things like that. So I could have one where I could see the full board and then have my face like in the corner. And there, there's the like side, a few yeah. things. Yeah, there are a few things that I do that. Uh, I wanted to show with this FM Gammon board. Um, the most specific thing is, uh, as I said, it's really easy to change the surfaces. Uh -huh. uh, and I have multiple of these surfaces. And one of the things that I've learned is if you put two surfaces on top of each other, it, it'll still stick magnetically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you flip it to close it and then you reopen it, sometimes a second one comes off, but Sometimes not. But yeah. the thing that I've noticed is when you have two of them uh, on top of each other, the checkers glide easier. Number really? one. Yeah. And yeah. the sound of the dice are more soft. That makes sense. When they hit. So like I'll roll them or I'll put it through a baffle box on one side and not on the other side. It's just it makes a different sound. So, yeah, that's nice. I like that. I someday I'll have one of those mag fit ones and we'll do, I'll do the same test. You know, you know what I think you'd love is like, if you ever go to a major tournament, yeah. you'll be able to see like all these different kinds of boards. I would love that. Yeah, I know it, it'll be in the cards for sure. Residency's got me pretty busy. New I baby, know right? it'll happen. They used to have them twice a year in Las Vegas, which is not too far from you. Oh, no, that's very close. Uh, down the I-15, uh, but yes. they've been having some challenges. We have them twice a year in Los Angeles. If you're ever around, we'd love to see you. Yeah, I can make a trip. Next next one's in December, usually in December and June. Okay. Yeah, that, that would be a good one. Uh, we get a lot of people, and I help out with that tournament as well. Um, so – that's that's fantastic. I've, I've really enjoyed watching your videos, and I really appreciate uh, the effort uh, and everything you provide to the backgammon community. So, so thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, thanks for reaching out so quickly. I I literally made the channel like under a week ago, and you're we're already here talking. So yeah, I, I love the opportunity. I mean, I've been peripherally part of the backgammon community for years, but to, I'm finally jumping in and like contributing because I I, I want to give back. It's always great to to have different kind of avenues uh, for people to promote backgammon whether it's the youtube videos or social media or creating tournaments or writing about it and things like that and uh there are a lot there are a lot of these channels that talk about strategy and things like that but not a lot that do what you do um and it really helps because when I'm looking to buy a board or I'm telling people about buying boards, they can go and actually look at you, you know, showing them the size, how it feels, the weight, the colors, how it plays, the sounds. Uh, it's it's really, it's really great. The more of this kind of thing we have, the better. Well, I plan to keep it up. So look for more in the future. Good, good. Okay. Well, fantastic. Looking forward to more of your videos. Um, it's been a real pleasure uh, to have you. Do you have any uh, final comments before we conclude the video? Final comments? Uh, no, just if, you, if you're watching this and you haven't checked it out, I'd love to, to have you as a viewer, maybe a subscriber on the channel. I'm sure Alex will share the link. Uh, yes. If you have questions, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, my Instagram is just DJ Jordan Nelson. So my name might be on the recording right down there. So at DJ Jordan Nelson on Instagram, if you have a question on something I reviewed or even my opinion on a board I haven't reviewed, but what I think of it, just ask. I'm happy to to help. Great. I'll, I'll put that in the description and I'll put a link to uh, your YouTube channel, The Serial Hobbyist. Yes. Um, 
and uh, people people can click on that and watch your videos. I highly recommend it. Um, and yeah, looking forward looking forward to the future and hopefully uh, we can meet in person. You know, one of the things that's happened uh, with the pandemic is you know it's created obviously a lot of challenges and you know you never want that uh, to happen in the future. Uh, but I like to look at kind of the positive things. Is one of the positive things is well as we said you know you have these sites where you can play backgammon and we have these video teleconferences and. Uh, it's the, this channel has given me the opportunity to meet people uh, from all over the world. I mean, you're not too far in Utah, but uh, still, I wouldn't have never had the chance to meet people like yourself and many others uh, without it. So, you know, I really appreciate uh, your time and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you. Likewise. Uh, my, my pleasure. We'll go ahead and conclude. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high quality content that you enjoy. And with the membership feature, you can get exclusive access to the most popular videos. Again, my book, Backgammon and Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.